G'day guys, um, today we're going to go through how to make a structured mesh for a NACA 0012 aerofoil. Uh, we're going to look at the geometry, the meshing, and then analyzing the results in ANSYS Fluent. Uh, so the video is going to have a few parts. First part will be this one where we are generating the geometry. Second part will be where we're generating the mesh. Third part will be running the simulation and the fourth part will be analyzing the results. So I've just downloaded the latest version of ANSYS, ANSYS Workbench 19. Um, you just go to ANSYS and you can download it free for students. Um, there are some limitations, but for this it doesn't really matter. So let's get started. All I'm gonna do is I wanna do a fluid flow analysis in Fluent. So I pick this from the toolbox and drop it into the project schematic. And then that will create the uh, the project. I'm going to name it NACA0012. And I'm going to open the geometry. So I don't have any experience with space claim. I had to play with it. It's a bit confusing for me because uh, I'm used to using SolidWorks and Design Modeler. So I'm just going to stick to Design Modeler. So I'll open a new geometry. And down the bottom left, you can see the design modeler is starting. So just give it a bit of time. So while that's opening, we'll um, have a look. Have a look at my uh, data file. So I've got the NACA0012 data file that I've produced. Uh, the format for ANSYS is the first column, I think it's officially called the curve number, but I could be wrong. So essentially for this one, it's all one curve, so that's just all ones. The second part is the point number. So I've got 200 points to represent my aerofoil. And the most important thing is that the last number in that column is a zero, so that tells ANSYS that it's a closed curve. Uh, and then we've got the X and Y coordinates here and the Z coordinates. So all I did to get those coordinates is um, go to the airfoiltools.com website. I've put in the 0012, which is a symmetric aerofoil 12% thickness. I put in the number of points there. I've put cosine spacing so we get some better resolution around the nose and close the trailing edge so we get a pointy bit here. Uh, generally when you generate a NACA aerofoil you don't have a closed trailing edge because the, the mathematics doesn't produce that so they've done something in here to close that edge so it's a perfect vertex. Then I've just copied those numbers and that's what is in this data file here. So that's pretty straightforward now we're going to go to the design modeler which I, which is open and we're going to import these coordinates so what you got to do is you go concept 3d curve uh, definition from coordinates file which i just showed you so what we're going to do is um, find that file i just named it macro 12 it's a text file and then you click generate so can't see anything here. So if we go up here to the top, we can zoom to fit or you can just press F7 and you can see there's my aerofoil. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a surface from that. So we need to go to um, concept again, surface from edges. We're going to click on that edge and we're going to click apply and then generate. So now we have our surface aerofoil and we are good to go with starting to make the domain. So we're going to do a sketch in the XY plane so you can see here we're in the XY plane. So I've clicked on the XY plane up here, got a new sketch and we're going to make a C style domain. So it's got a rectangle at the back and a circle at the front. So I'm just going to zoom out and draw some rectangle 
And I'm going to start dimensioning that now. So I will go um, horizontal. So I want to have a distance between there and there of, let's say, 0 0.1 meters. And this will become obvious why later. Um, when selecting the downstream kind of length of domain, it's really something that you've got to experiment with. Ideally, you'll make it a small domain and increase the domain size periodically until and then run the simulation and continue to val or check that the result that you're interested in isn't changing with domain size and you can say that the domain is not having an impact on the or the size of the domain is not having an impact on the result. Um, so for this one, I'm just going to say 30 meters. Um, I haven't validated that at all, but 30 meters is quite a, a, a distance downstream, um, and it will probably be, it'll be good enough for this tutorial. So if you really want to get into it, you can make it bigger and see what the impact is on the results. Um, so because I've dimensioned that from the, the y-axis, uh, the aerofoil actually takes up one meter, so I'm going to put that as 31 meters. Uh, we're also going to dimension this height, so it's a vertical height, and we're going to make that 20 meters. So that is the uh, the distance, which will be upstream as well, because we're going to make a circle with that radius. Um, so. We'll dimension that here too, so we know that's in the middle. Perfect. So what we're going to do now is we will create the circle. So we're going to go to draw. Uh, arc by center. And we're going to select this center point here. And we're going to go all the way up here to P where it's found that point. And then we should get another P there. Uh, we're now going to trim this this part out. So we got to modify, modify, trim, because we don't want this. Otherwise, it'll create a uh, a couple of surfaces instead of just one. So you can see now here, this is red. It's because this dimension is fixed, and it's saying that it's over constrained. So we can just delete one of those dimensions. Now it's sometimes a little bit difficult to to actually get it. Get rid of it. Yeah, just delete that one. Um, okay, so it's deleted both of them. So let's just mention this as radius 5, 20 meters. So that should be fine. Let's check that we still have this thing here. Yeah, so that's good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a surface from that. Uh, surfaces from sketches. We'll select these edges because we want to make the surface from that. Uh, the operation is going to be add frozen. So if we click add material, it's just going to add to the already existing surface, which is the aerofoil. And then you're pretty much just going to have one big body, which we don't want. We want to have two separate bodies. So we add that frozen, for whatever reason it's zoomed out. So now we can see we've got this body here and then that body there. We zoom in. So the Next step that we're going to do is we're going to subtract the aerofoil from the domain. So when you do a CFD study, you are essentially making a hole in your domain, which is the shape of the, the, the thing that you're interested in testing. And then the fluid flows over that gap. So we need to remove that surface. So the way we do that is we go to create boolean. We go to subtract. The target body that we're subtracting from is the, the domain surface and the tool that we are subtracting is this. So you see if I clicked on that and it's selected the main body again, but if we click on this second 
little rectangle there, it'll find that. And now we click generate, and you can see now we've subtracted that from there. So now we have our domain. Um, what we want to do is we want to add some edge sizing to our domain when we start meshing, and that'll give us a better control over the aerofoil uh, mesh. So we need to split this domain up and create some edges. There are a couple ways to do this. Um, you can do a sketch and kind of project on there. I'm just going to use, well, first thing, I'm just going to use a plane that already exists. So I want to split it in half. So I can see from here that the XZ plane goes right through where I want to split it. So I'm just going to select the XZ plane and then go uh, Tools, Face Split. I'm going to select that I want to split it by plane. The target face is that face. And the tool geometry is the ZX plane. So click apply and then generate. And then you can see I've got that split in here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another plane so that I can split it. Um, and that'll be at the trailing edge. So I click new plane up here. I click that I want to do the coordinates. So we know that the tail of the aerofoil is at one meter, or the trailing edge is at one meter. So I'm going to put that at one. The normal, so I want this plane to slice it this way. So I'm going to get a big slice going down there. Uh, so I know that the normal to that point is the X in one, and that's it. So if I go generate there, and I create another face split, uh, which is, where to go, there. So again, I'll change this to plane. Target face will be both of these faces, and the tool geometry will be the plane that I just created, and I click generate. So you can see now that split in four points. Now, before we had this um, this point at 0 0.1 meters, so I want to split it at 0 0.1 meters along there, and that'll become obvious why a bit later. So I'm going to create the last plane uh, from coordinates again, because I know the coordinates it's going to be 0 0.1 meters. The normal will be one in the X direction, and that's zero, so I click generate. And then you can see that that's created that plane there at the nose. And I'm gonna do one last face split. So I wanna select the plane. The target faces will be these two, because that's where the, the plane's intersecting. And the tool geometry will be that last plane. And I click generate. So now you can see I've got six separate parts of my domain. Um, and the reason that I've split it here is because we want to have a bit of edge control over that, that edge on the nose, and both these edges. So what we're going to do, again, it will become more obvious in the next video, we're going to map this edge up to this edge, and that edge down to that edge. And we're also going to be mapping that edge to that edge to that edge to that edge, and then these edges down. So I'm going to put some sizing controls on there and then create a face mesh, but we'll get into that later. So we've got two bodies here. Um, one thing that you can change is go to fluid solid, and we're not looking at a solid, we're looking at a fluid, so we're going to change that. And that's pretty much it. So the next video will be meshing this and uh, we're going to use the meshing module for that.